as we walk around, take a camera with you, or if your cell phone has a reasonable camera, use that. And when you see an interesting texture, make a record of it. Take a photograph of it and learn from it when you get back. What is this texture telling you? Reference material for substance materials is just as important as reference material for digital modeling an asset, such as a vehicle or a piece of furniture or a house or a machine. What does this paint finish tell us about this vehicle? It tells us a great deal. It tells us, first of all, quite apart from the style of it, that it's old. That it's been well used, it's clearly been well maintained, or it wouldn't still be running, but not maintained by somebody who wants to keep it in showroom or museum condition. We can see where the paint has worn away, the layers underneath, we can see the grey metal, or perhaps that's a primer. We can see the white undercoat. We can see the green top coat, and in places where it hasn't been exposed to the weather, or to wear, or to damage, you can also see the original gloss. Let's have a look at some of the things that a finish like this can tell us about an object. So just as with modeling an asset, you can create believability in your object and not only that, but communicate intuitively, rapidly, accurately to the viewer certain properties. The age, that affects the gloss. It affects the albedo, the color, particularly if it's been exposed to the sun. It may have faded. And if you remember from CMPM25, colors which do not reflect high energy light, such as reds, the red low energy end of the spectrum, will tend to bleach more than will colors which reflect high energy parts of the spectrum, such as blue paint, blue ink. Edge wear. Edge wear not only affects the finish, the glossiness, the color, remember we call this albedo, but it will also actually physically wear down surfaces such as wood and stone and over time also metal. Dirt. Has this object been used in a dirty environment? Has it been left outside in a dusty environment? Dirt can be ground into cracks so that when cleaning happens, there is a difference. There is a kind of a heightened contrast between the cracks and the areas which are wiped clean. Dirt can be dried on. Or dirt or dust can simply be from disuse. Something has been lying for a long time in a dusty or a smoky environment and the particles have settled generally on the top surfaces, not so much on the vertical, certainly not on the underlying surfaces, on the surfaces which are pointing down. So there is a normal aspect to this. Where, again, this affects edges and surfaces which are touched by hands, or repetitive movement of the various parts in a mechanism. The history. Again, going back to that truck, are old paint layers appearing? The primer, the undercoat, was this repurposed? Has this object actually been repainted at some time? Perhaps it was a military vehicle that has been turned into a civilian vehicle? Perhaps the opposite, perhaps it's a civilian vehicle, which in a military environment has been repainted in camouflage in order to make it less obtrusive. Damage. Was the damage accidental in the course of general use, or was it intended? Does this object have bullet holes in it? And was this damage recent? In other words, the exposed edges of metal are shiny and fresh, or is it old? Has there been dirt ground into the damage? Has the bullet hole 
or the scrape, exposed not shiny, but by now rusty and corroded material, because of course the protective paint layers are not going to be active anymore. Has the item been exposed to the weather? Is it stored outside? Is it near the coast, salt in seawater, or in areas which have salt put on the roads to get rid of ice, which will cause additional corrosion damage? particularly in areas which are exposed to that environmental corrosive factor. And finally, maintenance. Does the object look like it needs repair? Has it been repaired? Has it been kept painted and oiled? Does it look old but well used and loved? Has it been repaired so that there is a mixture of new and old parts with different finishes, perhaps different styles, perhaps different detail? All of these can tell your audience, your viewer, something about the quality of the object. So let's go back to some reference photographs. And already, just from that list, we can see the albedo change. We can see damage, which could be simulated by a normal map. We can see wear. We can see dirt. We can see quite a number of things that are affected by the experiences of this object. Here's another view of it, and you can see we've got some different detail here. We've definitely got edge detail around the headlight fairings here, and this will heighten the contrast. So if you've got something which has got a sharp radius edge, then it's going to be subject to more wear, it's going to be subject to more corrosion. Same thing again here. You can see these fascinating kind of watermarks of the metal, the primer, another coat of primer, a gray one this time, another undercoat, and then the final finish. So it's almost like it's been sanded away. But notice also there's actually a height difference. So we can see a definite cracking or removal of a distinct paint layer in certain places and also flakes are sticking up there are holes there are sharp holes rather than worn gradients here's the door and this door somehow doesn't look the same as the rest of it perhaps this door has been replaced at some time perhaps this is an old door perhaps there was major damage to this vehicle at some point and they found a matching door but they never bothered to repaint it so it's got more corrosion. It's got a slightly different color to it. The albedo of the top layer appears here to be a kind of a reddish brown instead of a green. Plus it's got a half-worn logo for AAA Southern California. This starts to locate this vehicle, or at least this door's history in a particular place and time. Construction vehicles, well used, not particularly old perhaps, the unworn sections look very bright and shiny, but the worn sections have scrapes, the edges, the parts with high curvature have wear, there are scratches from physical damage, there is not so much corrosion but adhesion of excess material. This bucket has been used to shovel concrete at some point and it hasn't been entirely properly cleaned so the concrete is set in layers and then it's been chipped away by later loads of perhaps rock. So there's a sharp edge to this material here, but the material sort of fades into the metal of the bucket higher up. A splash. Splash of paint, splash of concrete. We can see that this has a directionality. So it's not just, it's not being thrown at the bucket here, coming out radially from a source, and it's splattered on the bucket and been left. So here we have some direction, as well as a change in albedo, as well as a change in height. Tires are worn, edges are rounded off. Perhaps one of the tires has been changed earlier than the other. You may not want all your tires to be exactly the same in an older vehicle. Again, wear due to simple mechanical movement. 
the way that this device has been used in an outdoor environment, probably been stored in an outdoor environment, and it's been used against very hard, abrasive materials, will damage the finish, it will change the character of the modeling, it will round off the various sharp edges at the points where they actually contact the work material. Roads. Notice the cracks on the line here. A lot more cracks on the line than there are on the road itself. And this is probably because road paint is a kind of cement mix. It's a separate distinct layer that has its own thickness. And from the look of this, it also has its own expansion and contraction rate. So it breaks up over time. And the road surface. Damaged in places because of heavy traffic, because of weather conditions, because of perhaps a bad mix for a particular patch, something was placed in a hole later to fill it up, but it doesn't perform to quite the same specification as the rest of the road. And also mud. So as this wheel has gone round, it's spattered up mud, and we can tell this vehicle has been in a particularly muddy area recently, not hugely muddy, it's mostly relatively clean, but we've got directionality, we've got change in color, we can also tell it's, uh, it hasn't been cleaned since it actually went over that muddy patch. And natural materials, rocks, concrete, stone, pavement, moss, growing in particular areas. Moss is always supposed to grow on the north side of a tree because it gets less sun. Moss doesn't like direct sun. We've got different colors in the stone itself, often due not to particular directions of sunlight or rain, but due to materials being leached down from the top of the rock to the lower parts of the rock over time by rain. Same thing here. And also, this is a sedimentary rock. So we've got layers, which were originally horizontal, laid down, but the grain of this rock has been changed to be vertical because it's been placed in a yard. But also, perhaps, in a landscape because there's been some kind of movement, perhaps a mountain range where the layers are going up and down. Perhaps there's been a significant fault so the layers are discontinuous. You can tell a lot of the history of an object just by looking at the details of its structure and its material.